All right, guys, what is going on? Coaster here just to break down the Super Bowl. Biggest game of the year, as always. I like to break down the Super Bowl if possible, and thankfully this time I got some time on my hands. So I'll break down the Super Bowl. This is how I do it if you're not, if you're not new to the program. I talk about one team, I talk about the other, and then I talk straight down the middle what I think will happen and my, my thoughts on the game. So break down both teams. Let's start off with the AFC and the Denver Broncos. All right, so the Denver Broncos. By the way, I wear the closest hat that I got in my collection, so this is about as close as you're going to get. The Denver Broncos. They're a team that's been one of the best, uh, obviously, the last two years in the regular season. I don't think anybody matches them in terms of wins in the last two years. Uh, John Fox, of course, Peyton Manning, which was the big news a couple of years ago. Peyton Manning signs. They're viewed as a contender, and rightfully so. Last year, they had a bad, one bad error, and a conservative coach at the time, and that ruined their season. Just one random game where they should have won and they didn't finish the game well. This time, they, they go back with a 13-3 and record. They've been dominating offensively. Defensively, they haven't been... They were they're pretty much great. I think they're ranked right up there. There's been some games they've given up yards and plays, but there's they don't need a, a lot of defense. You have Peyton Manning. Uh, the big move for them was Wes Welker coming over, which he's doing all right. I wouldn't say he's great, but he's doing fine with what they got. Uh... Demarius Thomas, though, is the man. Uh, that guy's been that guy's been playing lights out. As long as he's healthy, he's been worth every penny they're playing. And Peyton Manning has that effect where he can make everybody else around him better, from offensive line to uh, just, just throwing it. I mean, their offensive line, which they've developed the last few years, uh, a lot of some third-year players or fourth-year players like Zane Beatles, Orlando Franklin, they're doing pretty well. Also, no Sean Moreno, a guy who was viewed as a bust uh, or a very big disappointment, has been picking it up this year. I, I've noticed uh, he's been that guy that the people or Josh McDaniels kind of envisioned him in a way. So, yeah, Denver, all offense, one of the best offense in the nation. Uh, pretty good, pretty good defense too. But it was, they were great on offense, especially if you're a fantasy owner. They were the ones that tear it up. I mean. There was one game Decker had that was great. Bailed my team out one day, but yeah, Denver Denver's offense just tore it up. Uh, not much else to say. There, I had them actually losing the conference championship game, believe it or not, to the Patriots. It was just something about the Patriots Kool Aid I was drinking at the time. Even though they lost some people, I thought they were going to be uh, better on defense, which they were. But Denver was a little better than them, and uh, Denver. Actually, Denver should have blown them out in all fairness. That should have been a fat blowout. But it wasn't. They didn't get to the end zone. There were some times. And uh, the AFC, there really wasn't that much competition, in my opinion. I mean, the Chiefs and Chargers made the playoffs, but the Chiefs' record was deceiving. They really weren't that good. They were just beating up some inferior opponents. I thought the parity in the AFC just wasn't that good. Uh, not saying Denver didn't deserve anything, but they did... Sp they did beat up their opponents when they had to, and they took care of business. So Denver, a lot of people had them as just making the Super Bowl just because this is Peyton's time, and uh, their window is uh, very short for a few years uh, until Peyton retires. I mean, we'll see what happens. But Denver's been good, pretty good all year long. Now on to the other team. <laughs> For the NFC, we got the Seattle Seahawks. This is a team that has been, quite frankly, the best team on defense. Uh, it's been very well documented. They've won pretty much all their games on defense. I mean, offense is just above average. They're not the greatest, but they, they've been winning games on defense throughout the year. I mean, Legion of Boom, we all know what they can do. Uh, this team really is built from the ground up. I mean, Pete Carroll comes in. He inherits a 7-9 and nine team, even though they made the playoffs and won a playoff game. It took a couple years. He, they had the couple down so-so teams, but once he got his own personnel in, and this team has been built from the draft. Uh, you look on their defense. Guys can step it up. They're loaded in depth. There were injuries. There was even a suspension to Brandon Browner, Walter Thurman. 
their corners. Uh, but they had no problem. Byron Maxwell, Jeremy Lane, they could step in, boom, just right when they need to. Uh, of course, they already have two of the better safeties in the league, Earl Thomas and uh, and uh, Cam Chancellor, and, of course, Richard Sherman, who we already know. Uh, linebackers, once again, homegrown, loaded. Bobby Wagner is a second-year guy. Bruce Irvin is a second-year guy. Uh, K.J. Wright was drafted by Carroll as well. And even when he was hurt, Malcolm Smith comes in there, and he played for the, the last month of the season, and he's been playing well. Uh, and, they're, of course, their defensive line, a very loaded front. They, they rotate like seven guys, eight guys at a time, and everybody's fresh. Uh, that's the only position, really, where they address in free agency with uh, Cliff Averill and Michael Bennett. But for the most part, that whole defense, that's Pete Carroll's product. He's a defensive coach, and he's drafted guys, coached guys up. They all know what they're doing on defense because they're one of the best, and they've won games single-handedly for the Seahawks. This year, there were there were some escape wins. They barely won, like one against the Rams or something. They loaded, loaded, all from top to bottom. It's the best defense in the league. On offense, they have uh, quite a. They had to battle some injuries with Russell Okung out for a lot of the year. Uh, Percy Harvin, their biggest acquisition uh, in the off season, one of them. They. Uh, he ex didn't play much at all. He's been hurt, and I think he's going to play the Super Bowl, but. <laughs> I don't know what to think. I mean, that guy's been doing... He's made a couple big plays against the Vikings, but that's it. He's been made a glass. It doesn't matter. They've been playing well without him. Sidney Rice was a big free agent signing a few years ago, but they, he's, about, he's out for the year. They're still playing fine. Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Curse, who's a UW product, if a local guy, doing pretty well. Uh, their offensive line has had their ups and downs, especially in pass protection. That's the one weakness, I think, with the Seahawks. Of course, Marshawn Lynch, they run the ball. That's They, they run have a run-first mentality. Uh, I expect them to be uh, running first again in the Super Bowl when the time comes. Uh, Russell Wilson, though, uh, definitely a guy who is very interesting, to say the least. There's all this talk about a running quarterback, but to me, he's just a quarterback who throws and just happens to run when he needs to. He, he's one who will elude when, when possible, but... He has a decent arm, and he can make those plays on the run when needed. Uh, with that being said, their offense has kind of peaked since that blowout game of the Saints. The month of December, offensively, they've been kind of up and down. Even in the playoffs, they haven't had the greatest offense, but they've made one or two big plays a game, it seems. And, uh, yeah, their offensive line, kind of kind of inconsistent. They're up and down, in my opinion. Uh, the running part is good. Pass protection is up and down. So... Offensively, they're right at right in the middle, uh, but defensively, they are elite. They have one of the best defenses in the league, and uh, that's been huge. That they can get all these guys, they can draft, and even though they're spending on the cap here and there, they they spend on players. But most of these guys are homegrown and still in their entry level deals. A lot of them, as I've already said before. So, yeah, Seattle. I had them actually playing in the Super Bowl, believe it or not. I had Seattle as a wild card team, but they get hot on, at the end on the road. I thought they were hot at the end of last year, and I thought they would make the Super Bowl there, but uh, they they won more regular season games than I expected, and I thought they were going to go on a hot road run, but they, they barely won some games, uh, including the one against the 49ers in the conference championship, where... Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers basically cooked it. I mean, you know, the, the three turnovers in the in the fourth quarter. This Seattle defense has played all about defense. Just get turnovers. I think they're the, they lead the league in turnovers, and uh, they're one of the best at doing it. That, that was one sick play by Richard Sherman on that final interception. Uh, they, single coverage. No one wants to throw to that guy man-to-man -man directly. Uh, the one thing I will say in weakness is their penalties. That that's They have a lot of penalties in the league. They could get caught for defensive holding, pass interference at times. But guys have filled in well when others are injured. I, I will give them a lot of credit there where it is due. So, yeah, the Ford Arrows may look like they have cooged it, but the Seattle Seahawks have played well. And deservedly, these are two number one seeds in the Super Bowl. Now, my take on the game, 
I think this is going to be a very defensive battle, believe it or not. I think good defense will shut down Peyton Manning. It'll just be whoever allows more uh, on defense. I think it'll be lower scoring in the 20s. Not Definitely not the teens, but I think this game will be in the 20s. I think Seattle's defense will win this game. I think that that's just what they've been doing all, all along. They stick to their identity. I would not be surprised that the Broncos win. Obviously, both teams have a compelling argument. Uh, Broncos all offense, all Peyton Manning all the time. I just think Seattle has that poise. They're battle-tested. They've won a lot of those close games where they've won defensively and finished strong. I think they're very capable of doing the same thing against the Broncos. They, I think they can shut down the Denver receivers. I think they could give Peyton Manning fits. When that defensive line between Averill, Bennett, uh, Red Bryant, Mebain, all those guys rotate around, I think they can wear out Denver's offensive line. But if not, if the Denver offensive line can block well, then Peyton Manning's going to have a field day because his offensive line has helped him out throughout the year. Uh, it's going to be a very, very uh, close battle, though. I, I know this sounds like Seattle's going to blow them out. They don't. Seattle's offense is up and down. I still think Wilson could make one or two big errors as well, which I'm not going to write off the Denver defense. Uh, but I'm going to stick with what I said in the preseason. Uh, there's, I don't tell my predictions out loud to a lot of you, but to five or six of you, like Ripper Eagle, you are my witness. I've had the Seahawks winning the Super Bowl since the preseason, and uh, I'm going to stand by it. It may not sound weird. I think Seattle's offense, as said earlier, has peaked at the wrong point, but their defense has been a consistent all year long, and I think they're going to ride that defense till the very end. So uh, I think the Seahawks win a very close game, 26-23. to uh, I would not be surprised, as said before, if Denver wins. But if Seattle comes and digs themselves a hole like like 17 to nothing, they're doomed. I don't think Seattle is going to come back if they dug, dig themselves a hole early on or if they, they choke early or hiccup. It, we'll see who starts well. And if it's close near the end, I really think Seattle's defense is just good enough to finish uh, – and, and Seattle's offense will carry just enough, make just enough plays on offense. Uh, we'll see what happens, though. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this game. Uh, obviously, as a fan, I'm rooting for the Seahawks. There's no secret there. Mainly because the Broncos are the Broncos. And, I mean, something's wrong if you're a Raider fan and you're not rooting uh, against the Broncos. You should be doing that, so. All right, sorry if this is an awkward jump cut, but take on the Super Bowl. There are things I don't like about the Broncos, not just because they're the division rival, but this has to do with just individual fans. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who like Peyton Manning just because he's Peyton Manning. And if you're a Tennessee Volunteer fan, I have no issue with this, but I have a lot of issues with these people who will root for Peyton Manning wherever he goes. I mean, there's individuals who have effect on fandom, and I, I get it. We can all respect the player and like the guy, but... <laughs> I get more annoyed at people who just like Peyton Manning because he's Peyton Manning. And if it's like that with LeBron James, Alexander Ovechkin. Yeah, there's a lot of individuals out there that people will just like so much, and Peyton Manning has that effect. I mean, it was like that with the Colts and now with the Broncos, and I'm not into that, this individual fan. I mean, Bronco fans who I actually know are cool. I got no issues with that, but I don't always like the individual fans, if you know what I mean. Yeah, go figure. Uh, that's just my take on the game. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, it's the Super Bowl. I will be making a post-game video, not immediately after the game, even the Monday after, but I'll have a reaction, and uh, I'll let you know how I feel about, felt about how the game was. So, Let me know what you guys think. We'll see you guys later.